We tend to come to, th to these conclusions about our relationship with the rest of the animal world based on language. I mean, if we mm -hmm. go back to Aristotle, you know, fourth century BC mm -hmm. and, and other philosophers through the centuries, there was a, language and thinking were mm -hmm. inextricably linked. Mm -hmm. The idea is that language is an external representation of thought. Mm -hmm. That's how we know we think. And, and you know, people would say, well, no other animals really think. They're not communicating. There's no evidence of that. Anything they're doing is purely emotional, which is mm -hmm. not a bad thing that things are emotional, mm -hmm. but there was no other, there was no, no real evidence that other animals could think, except in the case of parrots that are imitating speech, but that was just mimicry. It was, mm -hmm. had nothing to do with anything meaningful. By the way, we know now that parrots do a lot more cognitively than just mimic. I don't know if any of mm -hmm. you know about Irene Pepperberg's brilliant work. She's at Harvard with African gray parrots. She's taught them to use human words, and they, and they actually understand what they refer to. I mean, they really have learned aspects of human language. Um, but going back to this idea about uh, you know, language and thought being inextricably linked, as if you cannot think without language. Right. We can and, and, think without, and, we can think without language. Preverbal babies can think without mm -hmm. language. People that don't have a capacity for language because of some um, deficit can still think. Think. Mm -hmm. And when you look at animal behavior, there is almost a syntax or a pattern to their behavior. Mm -hmm. Right? When you look at your dog, there, there are patterns that they use. They, animals communicate in many ways. And what's really fascinating, and this goes right back to what you're saying, as an actress, as a, you know, and as just human beings, it turns out that in studies, 90% of what we do is nonverbal when we communicate. Absolutely. As an actor, you know that very well. An actor is not responsible for the story. It's the writer that write the story and the directors that execute it. You are in charge of the emotion mm -hmm. because there is no words that can be said without emotion. In fact, we learned the language, we learned our text so well that we don't even think about what we're saying. We just mm -hmm. concentrate on the emotions. And, this, and I think you see that when you see a good acting, yeah. that you see this person exuding emotion. And you read the emotion more than the language, more than the words. And you see bad acting where they, the language, the words, uh, uh, have no depth. You know, it's just uh, um, information. So this is really fascinating. So as an actress, when you work with someone, you can tell when they're not real. When oh, completely. It's not, yeah, and what is you, it that you're reading in that behavior? You, it's that almost like if it was, I mean, if I am on stage and I'm with a bad actor on stage, if I wasn't on stage, I was going to say to him, what's, what's, what are you doing? What's the matter with you? Because they are acting, I am so sad. <laughs> in life, you would say, well, what, what are you doing? You know. But on stage, if you're on stage, you have to <laughs> go on with the play. But, <laughs> um, but it, it is the emotion, it isn't the words, yeah. yes. And you, when you, you empathize, this is another mm -hmm. uh, very interesting to me on animals, is the empathy. Because with an actor, when you are on stage or doing a film with an actor, you tune in, you know, the same way you, you, know, you go home and you, you, know, you see your child or your husband. So you, you tune in. You say, how are you? But you know, you're not really listening. You're just sensing him, you know, empathy. And uh, if they say, no, I'm fine, nothing to worry. Mm, mm. You know, you know it. And empathy to me, is, it would be very interesting because I sense that also with animals. For example, with my dog, I sense that there is a lot of empathy between him and me mm -hmm. that goes on. And that's how we communicate. Um, and of course, he knows a few words, and I know a few of his words. You know, I know if he's barking because he wants to have the door open, or if he's barking because somebody, because he's alarmed and somebody is coming that he doesn't know. So they, they do have different barks. Um, but that's not how we communicate, it's much more than that.